to build a tiny house on wheels is probably far different from what I did because I basically went the same. It worked for me almost the same as a regular house. Yeah. I got an architect to draw up the plans. I got everything stamped by the from the, for the foundation from the engineers. I brought that to the planning department. They looked it over, rubber stamped it, and that was it. You know what? You did it right because I I've been in house flipping forever. I've done like 500 houses in early days. I would try to skip processes. Can you believe my personality? <laughs> no, you, you would never want to skip do that. processes. I don't, I don't believe it. And uh, you, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it's true. So we gotta start. We gotta start. So I, I'm gonna try. Jack, Mac and Espy. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, I didn't say it right. <laughs> I didn't. I can see it in your face. No, I laugh anytime anybody tries to say it because they try so hard. Okay, you just, tell me how to say it. It's Mac and Espy. Mac and Espy. Yeah. There you go. You got it that time. Did I say it? Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, Jack and I have been friends for a long time, working out together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you can't remember? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a running theme of these podcasts that I can't remember stuff. Yeah. I did play a lot of hockey. Yeah. A few concussions. Maybe maybe that's what it is. So you, uh, I followed you on social media, obviously, because we're friends. And one thing, you don't want to get in a fight with Jack uh, on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't debate anybody on social media, but if you want to, uh, you're good. You're, I, that's not why you're here. This oh, is not why no. Jack is here. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you you built a the big trend or what everybody's thinking about, and I followed it. Like in, you're, are you done yet? I'm like 99 percent done. I got a little bit of trim work to do on the inside and the stuff I don't want to do in the winter time. So tell us what it is. Everybody's just sitting here waiting, riveting on the edge of the oh, seat. Oh, what I built. Yeah, what'd you build? What'd you build? Uh, I built a 600 square foot tiny house by the sea in Kokang. It's where? Kokang. So it's a tiny house. You have yeah. built a tiny house. Tiny house, yes. Why is everybody so fascinated with these tiny houses? I really don't know why everybody else is fascinated with it. I am. I'm, I'm watching. Like I, I, I it's just the idea, of, I think for most people, it's the idea of like mortgage being mortgage-free and it's smaller, so it's less uh, of a cost and it's not a bunch of wasted space. Uh, for me, it's not mortgage-free. <laughs> I spent yeah. way too much money on it. Uh, <laughs> But it's the size I needed. So we lived in a huge house. It was, well, huge for me. It was 1,800 square feet. But we lived in two rooms. We lived in the kitchen. Who do you have? Who, who's Just me, my wife and I. Okay, two of you. So uh, we had kids, but they're moved out. So they have their own homes. Um, and we were just living in two rooms. We'd be in our bedroom, maybe sometimes in the living room and in the kitchen. So we had bedrooms empty. We had a full finished basement empty. And it was just a lot of space to heat that we weren't using. Um, so we just thought, why not just move into something that fit us? And an apartment wasn't a great I idea because that's somebody else's. Yeah, you're you're still renting. And I think of it. You know how I think of it? When I see, first seen the tiny house, I'm probably like everyone else, where it's been in the back of my mind for a long time. Every time you go away, what do you get? Like when you go on vacation, where do you stay? Generally. Yeah, in a tiny house. Yeah. In a tiny two-bedroom <laughs> condo or a condo yeah. or, a, a or an apartment. And you mm. have the time of your life. Yeah. You don't need anything. You're going and doing stuff. And you, you think, wow, this is all I really need. Do I need all this other crap? So I agree. I find it fascinating. It's uh, We kind of evolved. We started watching the shows, Tiny, tiny House Nation, all those. And we actually found one of the tiny houses on wheels that are in those shows that was for sale. And we went and looked at it, and it was 300 square feet. Oh, and that's tiny. It was very it's tiny, like but tiny house. very cool. Had everything you need. Had washer, dryer, shower, sinks, kitchen, yeah. whatever. Had everything you need. Um, and it was on 15 acres of land, which was really cool. And it had a big garage. With around it. here? It was uh, down towards Hillsboro. Okay, so it was, so it was, it was in New Brunswick. Market. Yeah, it was like, around here. Yeah, yeah. okay. And we went and looked at it, it was really cool. We were all into it and it came with like a tractor for the, for the property and it had a big garage next to it as well. So it had some extra space. And uh, we went to see the bank to see if we could like do something with it. Yeah, they won't finance things. And they had no interest in touching foundation. that thing, nothing whatsoever. So we thought, okay, that's not gonna work out. So we started thinking, okay, we'll just build something that suits our needs. And my best friend for like 25 years said, there's like this structure next to my house, right next door to my house on a piece of land in, in cocaine. It's right, you, you have an ocean view and the guy will sell it. 
So there was a there was a shed on it. It was a shed. It was 600 square feet, but it was a cool looking shed. It had like a tower on the side, and it was kind of neat looking, because the guy that owned it was an architect, and he built this whole neighborhood, and he needed a shed to put all the stuff in. So he yeah. built this really cool looking shed, so it would match the neighborhood. It was like a beach community. So I went and talked to him. He said, "Yeah, for sure, I'll sell it to you." I bought that from him, and then we went to the bank and we sold our house in Moncton which took no time at all, less time than we thought. Well, Moncton, uh, the market's booming right now. Well, we got put out of our house so quick, we didn't know what to do because yeah. we p I put it on Kijiji and it sold in a day yeah. for what we asked. So we were just kind of out of our house. So we lived in our trailer. Well, you know what, you're going along with, I did a podcast with Jeremy and uh, I don't know if you watch it, probably not. We talked about selling privately and it, you, it can be done. Well, I, it can. The only reason we did it is because we weren't in a rush to sell. Yeah, well, Moncton. isn't that always the way? And we thought, why, why bother? Just put on Kijiji. If it sells, it sells. I want to bring. I want to come back to if you're if you're listening to us and you're not in Canada. In Canada, it's hard to finance. The banks don't like financing uh, like mini homes, that sort of thing, cottages that don't have a foundation. So I don't know what it's like where you are, but for us, so you originally couldn't get a mortgage. I just want to explain that that you couldn't yeah. get. You can't get a mortgage from the bank. Sometimes they want to do a personal loan, but it, sh it sends the rates through the roof. It's not, it's not worth it. So yeah. if you want to buy a cottage, it's, it's tough if it doesn't have a foundation or uh, I guess tiny house now falls into the same thing. Yeah, so our, our place that we built, it doesn't have a traditional foundation, but I went, I dealt with the bank. I found a bank that was kind of willing to go with it. And I had the architect that sold me the place. He drew up all the plans for it and got them all stamped. And it has a foundation. Um, it's called Thermopiles. Okay. Um, the com I think Postec. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. use Postec all the time. Right? Yeah. Postec. There's a number of different companies, but yeah. So it's all engineered. Helical piles. Yeah. They drill them in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. They drill them down ten or fifteen feet, whatever they need to hit below the frost line, and yeah. the the bank was fine with that, so they approved the mortgage. Well, you can build a house on helical piles. You can do. Uh, we did. We built a tiny. Yeah, house you on built there. a tiny. <laughs> 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 yeah. So well, that's why we're here. Yeah. So uh, I want to step. So you were sitting home one day and who came up with the idea? Your wife, you, just both at the same time? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, then it was her. We've been just watching. Then it was the, her. It's we've always been, her probably, if you can't yeah. remember. We've been watching the shows for years and just thinking about it, right? Because we've been, uh, I don't have kids of my own. They were her kids and, and they're older. They're like 27 and 29 now. So they've been out of the house for years. So we've just been sitting alone, the two of us in this big house for a while. And we thought well, it's such a waste of space. So let's, we've been watching the show and we like the idea. So we, uh, I think it wasn't you. No, it was another f real estate friend of mine. Oh no, it was me. It was me. No, there's, it wasn't there's you. No it wasn't, wasn't you. Nobody else in real estate. <laughs> okay. no, go ahead. Uh, anyway, somebody said we, there's one for sale and we went and looked at it and we just got, okay, gung ho into it. And yeah. so, so what did you do with all your crap? Not, not saying your stuff is crap, but <laughs> we obviously all as human beings. We didn't have a lot of crap to begin with because we've been kind of thinking about this for like Minimalist. five years. Okay. And we've been paring down and paring down and paring down. And when I sold the house, it was to um, a, a couple of parents and they had a kid that was going to the university or uh, college here in Moncton and they're from St. John and they had no furniture. So we oh, just gave them, we gave them all the furniture with the house. Why not? So we what just you do with it. We packed our clothes and we left. Yeah, that's it. So, so you have a mortgage on it, yeah. but even if you have a mortgage on it, you might had a much bigger mortgage on the house. I'm assuming, maybe. Well, no, because it was mostly all paid off. Oh, yeah. super. But your <laughs> my point was, I guess uh, we can take that out if you want. <laughs> no, <it> doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, your expenses are going to be like micro compared to heating a house. Yeah, it's uh, well, we've been heating it more than we probably need to just because it's smaller, so we're thinking, oh, we'll just crank the heat up. But, uh, $3 for $5. No, it's not. The heating bill isn't as small as I thought it would be. Like, I was thinking it'd be like 100 bucks a month or something, but it's not. It's like 200 bucks a month in the wintertime to, to heat it. Well, $200. I, I, sometimes my house, if it's really, really cold, well, we switch to natural gas. Oh, yeah. that reminds me. We're going to stop just for a second. Thank Liberty Utilities, our sponsor. In my house, I switched to natural gas, and the price went way down, and I find it a warmer heat, but... Back to uh, $200, it still isn't even really it's that not, bad. It's not bad. I guess my larger house was like 350 in the wintertime to heat. So it's still a lot cheaper, yeah. I guess. But 
we, we have a well, so we don't have water bills from the city, stuff like that. We have a, a septic, but it's weird, it's a, cu- it's a community septic. It's not like an individual septic tank. There's so like you're, you're, you're number two have friends. Yeah, lots yeah, of friends, yes. You don't want them They all meet in the street and they <laughs> go out to some of them. <laughs> it's a, a party stream. Yeah. No, no, but that's a good way to go if you, if you can do that. Yeah. Why you spend 10, 15 grand on a septic field just for yourself? Yeah, no, it cost me 1,200 bucks yeah. to install the pipe to go to the road. So and then they're good. lonely, yeah. you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, they How did you, uh, do you worry about freezing? Because we had minus, like minus 40 couple weeks ago? Freezing of what? Pipes, plumbing. No, I spray foam the, the hell out of the whole place. Everything's encased in spray foam, the pipes underneath everything. So you, in that minus 40 degrees, because I had houses and apartments that we had issues with freezing. Really? No, I got, uh, I got heating tape on the pipe coming up from yeah. the ground. And then I got that boxed in with so spray no foam. Not so far, no. So you prepped, you did it right. Yeah, I spent a lot of money on insulation yeah. and spray foam. So if somebody wants to do it, they want to go, obviously they're going to hire me to sell their house, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, or Kijiji, sure, yeah. I'm joking. Or Kijiji's are like our Craigslist for people yeah. in the States. Um, what do they need for permits after they sell their house? or What, like, what do they got to do to get started? Uh, to build a tiny house on wheels is probably far different from what I did because I basically went the same it worked for me almost the same as a regular house. Yeah. I got an architect to draw up the plans. I got everything stamped by the, from, for the foundation from the engineers. I brought that to the planning department. They looked it over, rubber stamped it, and that was it. You know what, you did it right, because I've been in house flipping forever. I've done like 500 houses. In early days, I would try to skip processes. <laughs> Can you believe my personality? No, you, you would never want to skip do that. processes? I don't, I don't believe it. And uh, you, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it's true. I know, shocking. Um, but you went and got the architect, engineer, got it all yeah. set, and then you just walk in, and that is the right way to do it. That's what I hear. That's what and it's less me. stressful. Well, it's still stressful, but it's probably less yeah. stressful. It's yeah. easier. Yeah. Because try going in without nothing or. Yeah, and then you know, they come in. And I mean, in, I live in Kent County, which is a small little county compared to the Moncton County, Westmoreland County. And they didn't seem too concerned about anything. Like, they looked at the plans and gave me the permit. And then they said, I want to see it before you put the walls up. Yeah, that's normal. And they came and, yeah, okay. So that was. So who framed the whole thing? Like, when you brought the, you had the plans, you brought it to a a contractor, carpenter? No. So the main structure, the outer structure was built. Mm -hmm. It had a roof on it. And it had the outer walls were done. That was it. It was just two by four inside. And I did everything else, except for the electrical. Oh well, yeah, you need a license. I had Jeff Scott do the electrical. Oh Jeff, that's who we should have on a pa- podcast. Yes, you should have Jeff. Well, he's on a, a bum. Podcast. <laughs> he's a bum. <laughs> Jeff's a bum. Jeff's not a bum. <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm just joking. I'm gonna actually see if he messages me to see if he watches the podcast. I bet he doesn't. I bet he doesn't. We'll <laughs> let you know if we get a message from Jeff. No, I, to- Jeff's good I guy. totally watch all your stu- stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Yeah. No, I'm just joking. Well, we work out together all the time. We do? Yeah. We did. Well, we used to. Yeah, we don't yeah. anymore. You don't want to watch you don't all the time. You don't you're work you're big on uh, fitness. Like, you're a huge. What do you do for work? I'm a nutrition coach. Oh, so you actually work in fitness now? Yeah, I do, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. you you know what? It's good. Because yeah. yeah. people may know, when I, if you're listening to this, Jack's like fit is a, a rock, like incredible. <laughs> if you're watching, you can see it. But how much, can, do, can we talk with that? If you want to. We'll get sure. back to the tiny house stuff. Yeah. But how much did you weigh before? Uh, I was 300 pounds. You were big. Yeah, I was. Uh, that was 15 years ago. I was 300 pounds, and if I recall correctly, I was 48 percent body fat. Wow. What are you now? Um, 195 and about 11 percent body fat. Yeah, and you're a brick, <laughs> like a brick house. Yeah. yeah. People who <laughs> argue with you on Facebook don't want you to come off Facebook and come <laughs> to their house. You don't want that. Uh, I'm nice in person. <laughs> Not so nice on Facebook sometimes. But so what? Uh, what kind of? What do you? You're coaching, what do you take, how do people lose weight? Like, what do you coach, what do you tell I'll them? I'll do anything really, but I specialize primarily in low carb diets, ketogenic diets. Oh, keto? Yeah. Keto, I, li- I like keto. Yeah, I've been keto for 15 years. That's how I lost all my weight. Yeah. Uh, and I just never stopped doing it. But I do any kind of diet, whatever people want. I'm actually uh, about a couple months away from being a registered nutritionist, so. Good. I've been doing that for the last So do you years, work so. from home then? You work from I your work tiny out of home. my tiny house, yes. Cool. Because a lot of that stuff now is online. All online it's for me. All online, yeah. I started out doing some 
like local consult stuff, but I found it yeah. was just, I'd drive to people's house or they'd come to my house and it would take two hours to do one person. Online, I can do 10 people in two hours. Yeah, and don't so you uh, love helping people? It's what I spend all day doing. I, I have a Facebook group uh, that I help people in for free. Oh, what's your Facebook group? It's Common Sense Keto. Common Sense Keto. Yep. Now, not everybody's gonna agree with keto because there's the vegetarians that I got in trouble for I made some Facebook, if you follow me on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook stuff, I got on, and then yeah. what's worse is I'm that a was little bit like you. That was my favorite content you ever did. <laughs> but you make a little joke, then you start getting messages, yes. and then you can feed off those messages. I'm not offended by anyone. I'll actually go vegan. I have gone vegan. Yeah. Before uh, like a big hockey tournament, I'll eat less meat, more vegetables. I like it, but I love meat, Yeah. and uh, my big thing... And this is totally, I know nothing. And, well, not that I don't know anything. <laughs> but you almost have to say that yeah. so people don't freak out. Yeah. I, uh, I think the devil in all this is sugar and breads. I think you can eat vegetables, meats, all these people. What's a big meat one that everybody's doing? Carnivore. What do you think of that? Uh, I'm probably pretty close. I mean, the strict carnivores out there will tell me I'm not carnivore because I don't do it right. I'm not 100% carnivore. But I... I pretty much eat only meat. I don't eat many vegetables. Really? But, uh, and actually, some of the keto people are starting to hate me now, too, because I eat sugar. Uh, well, you, but you eat, okay. You before, eat I, before I train, I train hard. I train two hours a day at high intensity. And I spent 10 years doing CrossFit on keto, no carbs. Yeah. And I did pretty well. But then when I actually started taking courses on nutrition and on human physiology, I learned what sugar does for you and what you're doing when you work out without carbs at that intensity, and it only makes sense to use some carbs beforehand. Yeah. And I can still, I'm still back in ketosis after my workout, so. You're burning that sucker off. I burn all the carbs I eat off during yeah. the workout, and then I'm back in ketosis afterwards, and I spend the rest of my day there. Yeah. So I, I got carnivores on one side that are saying, you're not a real carnivore, and then I got ke keto people yeah, on the side that, you're it, not real keto. Does it fall on who you are as it, an individual? Absolutely. You can't take somebody that's sitting at home on their couch 24 hours a day and give them carbs, and I agree. they'll be fine. But if you're someone like me or you that work out, there's yeah. nothing I wrong still eat an energy bar, like, and it's probably all sugar, before, yeah, if I'm playing two or three games. If I play one of game, course. probably not. You're going to use that. There's but in tournaments, we'll play that. two or three games in a day, or do you know what I mean? And I'll, I'll have a... Yeah, I spent, I, so 15 years I was dieting and I spent 15 years, because keto worked so great for me, I lost 125 pounds in a year and it worked so great, I thought that carbs were the reason that you got fat. So I didn't eat any for 14, 13, 14 years. Yeah. And I spent nine years doing CrossFit without eating a single carb. And now, for the last year, I've been eating carbs, and I feel better than I ever did, and I look better than I ever did. And it's because I actually did two weeks of a vegan diet just to prove right. that sugar made people fat. I thought, for sure, sugar made you fat. So I ate two weeks of a high-carb vegan diet, and I didn't get fat. I lost weight. I'm like, well, wait, there's something going on here. Well, so I, it I, forced me to learn something about nutrition that I didn't know before. So all the people that are diehard, keto, low-carb, think that sugar's the devil. It's not. And then you got the people on the other side that are high carb vegans that go fat's a the devil. They're yeah, both, I just said they're sugar's both right. a devil. They're both right and they're both wrong. I know, sugar's, but I just said sugar's a devil. Well, you said you don't know anything. Yeah, but I, <laughs> it, it's true. But what I, what I refer to sugar's a devil is the couch, let, let's use some person, gets up, has cornflakes, pop tarts, for lunch has pasta with sugary sauce, whole yeah, white after sugary sauce, and supper. Yeah. They're eating Kraft Dinner. Another pop tart, and then a piece of cake and a Joe Louis, which yeah. is like the like uh, you know uh, Sara Lee cakes. That's what I'm kind of talking about. Yeah, that's a f yeah, that's not good for that's anybody. So of course, well, that's just to save my you know reputation because yeah. I <laughs> might know something. Yeah, something. <laughs> so you know something. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I think, and like I said, it's, this is just what I think. If going zero sugar, all carbs, or eating a steak for breakfast, lunch, supper and chicken breast and not eating any, if that jump starts your weight loss and Fantastic. puts you in a place, absolutely, do it, yeah. giddy up. But there's different, you can make any diet work, and I've learned this over, over the years, with actual getting a proper education. There's a lot of experts out there that are, 
think they're experts in keto and they think they're experts in vegan, but they don't actually take any nutritional education. They just Google everything they know. I actually went the opposite route. Before I started doing any coaching, I went and got multiple certifications in nutrition and they teach you how the body works yeah. and you can figure it out, but you can make weight loss work on any diet. It doesn't matter what diet you do. You just got to do it the way it's prescribed and it's it'll work. Way. It's, but there's intricacies around it. Like with keto, you can eat a little bit more calories and still lose weight because there's hormones involved that aren't involved when you do a higher carb diet. But you can make them both work. It just depends on following the prescription. They, they both work in different ways. So the people that are losing weight on high carb, fine, you can do it that way. People who are losing weight on low carb, they, they both work. I find that the people that are on both ends, they argue a lot, but they're both wrong and they're both right. That's how I feel. They could meet in the middle and they're both right. They, can, yeah. they both work. Nobody's the enemy. But everybody likes. Well, to I pay. think the enemy is sitting on the couch eating pop tart. Do 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 exactly, do do because yeah, then that's right. you're not giving your body a chance to do anything. Yeah. To me, so if you're eating meat, vegetables, whatever. Yeah, I think the world would be less interesting on, especially the. Uh, what would you do on social the, media? The social no media debates? world, if everybody didn't fight in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't fight on the internet. I try to keep it all fun and positive, but I do love. Watching. Well, I took all my. I stopped posting anything nutrition-wise on my personal Facebook. Yeah because I found it was just getting too intense and it was getting p really personal. You know what, now that you say that, because there's a doctor friend of ours that you would tag her on stuff <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And I would just sit <laughs> home and giggle. <laughs> no, and I, I haven't seen that lately. I had to, st I had to stop because it, for me it was kind of good fun and I was yeah. just ribbing, but for others sometimes it doesn't go that way and they take it personally and they start to get offended with things. So. And I just found that it was alienating people and I didn't want to do that. So I still do it, but I join groups, Facebook groups and okay, stuff. Okay, well, that's, that gives I'm going to get back to your contact information after. But let's get back to the house for a second. Yes. Uh, are you happy? Are you in the house now? Yeah, we've been in it since early November because we were living in a camper for three months while we built it. So a tiny and house. And the pipes replacement. froze in the camper, <laughs> so we had to get out. So we were kind of forced into the tiny house real quickly, but it's we've been living in it since. Do you like, like it? Love it. Would you ever go back to a big never. romping house that you got a vacuum and never clean and shut the doors and turn the heat off because we never go in those rooms? Right. Never. Never in a million years. It's intriguing. It's so perfect. I built it exactly how I wanted it and exactly how I need it. And it's just great. I have big windows that look out on the water. Oh, you're going to love it soon because it's, it's winter yeah. right now. Yeah, I know. Spring is coming. Yeah, I know. And Cocan is a beach yes. town. Yeah. Not far from here, 30 minutes, 25 minutes? It's 30 minutes exactly from here. And it's a beach town. If you have not come to New Brunswick and seen our beaches, you're missing out. And Jack's going to be living on the beach. Yep. It's, uh, I love it. I can see it from my We're window. We've got to come and see that. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I, I got a little bit of work left to do, just trim work and stuff. But So how long would it take me, if I wanted to start today, to build one of those tiny houses? It took me by myself three months. So yeah, you're the still only, two, three months. Okay. The only help I had was I had an electrician, I had a plumber, and I had somebody do the mudding because I don't like doing yeah, that. Yeah, well, you, you got to do that right. That's an art. Yeah. Those guys are artists. Mudders? Yeah. Like a plastic guy who does a crack filling? Because I've seen yeah. guys who try to do it themselves and think it looks great. <laughs> Mine like, still doesn't look great. You don't great. need to go to, to Grand Canyon. You've got yeah. it all over your And walls. you got to really be careful who you hire, too. Like, I hired a guy that was recommended by the painter I used, and I still had to have somebody yeah. else come back and fix stuff that yeah. he did. But Contractors, it, uh, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough to find good people. I, I, it's my business. It's but hard. I, I learned everything I needed to know about how to build that house off YouTube. Really? Like I did everything, I, I did the siding, I built the front porch, I built the, I did the skirting around the outside, I did the stone on the outside, everything. Yeah. The only thing I didn't do was literally the, elec the electrical, the plumbing, plumbing, and I did some of the plumbing, but the rough plumbing I didn't do, yeah. and the, uh, the mudding, that's it. And you love it? I do. So would you recommend to people, think about it? Not to everyone, it's definitely not for everyone. Well you got no kids either. If you have kids, it's, I don't think it's a great plan, but if it's just two, two people, it's for retirement, I think it's ideal. Can, can I ask you a little bit of a personal question? Yeah. Did, you, did, you, did it affect your relationship with your wife? No. No, we were always, to, we're always together anyway. Like, did it bring you closer or apart? Same. Same. 
Oh, I great. think the living in the camper almost ended our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> but once we got out of that... She's not listening, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> she was super happy once we got out of the camper and into the tiny house. Like, she was over the moon. So, And it's not even 100% complete yet. But, like, there's still, like I said, there's a little bit of trim work left to do. But That's exciting. I can't wait yeah. to... i got to come down and see it. Yeah. Now, how do people uh, contact you if, if they want to uh, help losing weight or... Hire a uh, coach. Well, if they want to go, just check out my Facebook group. It's Common Sense Keto on Facebook. Um, there, I think there's two Common Sense Keto pages, but one has like no followers, and mine has 125,000 followers. So. You have 125,000 followers? Yeah. yeah. That's insane. That's not the biggest Facebook group on keto. No, but it's, but it's, it's that's big. big. It's big enough, yeah. And I also, I started a new one, because that one's pretty strict. It's like really, st- I deal with mostly really unhealthy metabolically damaged people that can't lose weight no matter what that's my kind of my specialty yeah um so that that group common sense keto with 125 is really strict and hardcore like ketogenic i started another group called common sense keto athlete uh, that deals that's a little wow more, that's crazy little more loose and i thought we were just going to talk about tiny houses no there's way more because i like fitness to. too there's way more to me than tiny. Yeah, houses. yeah, you're yeah. you're just more than a tiny house yeah. guy. Yeah, but I also that's just my Facebook group, so you can find me there if you just want uh, some free help because I help people all the time for free. But I actually do my coaching business is under Maritime Dietary Management dot ca. Maritime Dietary Management dot ca. Well, thanks for coming. No problem. And I'm going to end with this: the vegans. I was just joking. I was just joking. Can we end on that? Because it's going to lead to how many comments I'm going to get. I won't add anything to that. Message anonymous at anonymous.com. Hey, thanks, Jack. No problem.